Hey, Tim Unkert here. And in this video, what I'm going to talk about is installing Visual Studio Code on a Chromebook. Now, if you've been watching this channel, you notice I do a lot of my coding on a Chromebook and I actually work as a professional web developer and I use a Chromebook primarily. I think it's uh, a great device to work on and it works just, it works very, very well. Uh, one of the best text editors, in fact, the most favorite text editor of the 2021 uh, Stack Overflow survey, um, the most famous IDE was Visual Studio Code. And for good reason, it's a great text editor. Uh, you'll notice I use Emacs and Vim sometimes on this channel, but um, you know, lately there's been a few things about those that have been kind of like lacking compared to VS Code. So I'm thinking I'm just going full VS Code. Um, so anyways, to install it, we need to do a few things. First thing, I have a, a fresh um, uh, power wash on this Chromebook, so um, it's reset. And first thing I need to do is go into my settings here, and I'm going to need to go to the advanced tab here and go to developers, and I need to turn on the Linux development environment. So I'm going to go do that, and I'll pause the video after I do that because it's going to take a few minutes to install uh, Debian 10 and I'll come back um, once it's done with that. But first, you know, you click on turn on, you're going to go click next, you check a username, they give you a suggestion, that's fine. I'm going to click install and it's going to go ahead and install. So what I'm going to do is pause for a moment. Hi, I'm back and we'll see that Linux has been installed. Um, my connection's a little slow, so you might have seen me freeze up a little bit there. But um, anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is what I usually do when I, I install is just check for updates. I type in sudo apt update and then and the two, uh, you know, you hit the shift seven twice for that symbol. Uh, I should know what that symbol is, ampersand. And sudo apt upgrade. And then I hit enter, and it's going to run through that. That's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, they're changing from uh, stable to old stable. I'm going to say yes, it's fine. Uh, yeah. And then it's going to ask you, uh, it's going to install a few more things. So I'm going to go yes, that's fine. And it's going to go ahead and just do the upgrades. And um, then we'll go ahead and we'll get uh, download Visual Studio Code, the installer, and install it. While it's doing that, let's navigate to the web page. So I'm going to just type in vs code and you'll see uh, that i've visited this page many times <laughs> it is true uh they're probably like oh he's downloading it again seriously come on um yeah okay anyways um so i'm going to click on this you'll see it says free built on open source runs everywhere this text editor slash id is awesome uh adam is also awesome let me put that out there, but the, you know, those, uh, two, um, electron text editor is really good. All right. And, and they do run on pretty much anything. This is a Chromebook that has four gigabytes of Ram. Um, I'm recording something, you know, I have a container open with Linux. I have removed the Google play store, but yeah, it's pretty, uh, you know, I got this from Walmart. I got this machine from Walmart and it's going to run. Um, all right, so I just click the download. You're going to download the .deb for an AMD Chromebook. You want to, you want to have like a, I have an Intel chip, so you want to have that versus like a MediaTek. I think you can download an ARM, but I haven't done it because I don't have one. Um, uh, I'm not sure what they have for that. Let's see. Do they have an ARM? Let's see with other downloads. Um, yeah, they do have an ARM, so that may work. Um, but again, I, I don't know. So check into that first. Um, anyway, so 
So let's go ahead and download it. So now I'm going to go and install with Linux. And I'm just going to click install. Click OK. And it's going to go do its business. It's installing. So you know, it may take a little bit. My, my internet where I am in the evenings in Colorado gets slow. Um, but we're already at 72%, but it is slow. Uh, so it may take a little bit of time to download, like a minute or possibly two. This is real time. All right, stuck at 72%. Oh, there we go, 96%. Come on, computer. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Uh, yeah, that's a slow internet connection, but. Ninety-eight percent, almost there. Uh, by the way, you can close this out. Once this is installed, you can delete this file. You don't need it. Uh, I'm going to close that out and say installation progress. Oh, look at that. And I had it pinned previously, so it's it's come up here pinned. If, you, if you're installing it for the first time, it won't be up there. So you'll just have to go here. You'll probably see it right there or down in your Linux apps. As you can see, it's in my Linux apps. Okay. So we'll start it up and we'll get going with it. Okay. All right, so when you start up, it has this welcome screen. You can choose the look you want, which is the themes that you want. So you could do uh, light, dark, high contrast, whatever. Uh, you know, you can choose the language extensions. You can do control shift P to get to your commands and you can open up your code. There's a bunch of other stuff. There is uh, a learning thing here. What I like to do, when um, I download this is I do a uh, control comma and I open up my uh, settings and I click on the title bar because this like this white title bar bothers me. So I go here and I click to custom and it's going to say I need to restart. So I restart it and then check this out. All right, this looks pretty nice now. Sophisticated. Um, and the other thing is I'm going to search for telemetry. And I'll enable the crash reporter, but I don't want them looking at what I do because there's only like 14 other million people that have downloaded this app. And I'm sure they're really concerned about how I'm updating WordPress websites on the back end. Just kidding. Uh, but I think it does run a little faster with this out, but you may want to keep it if you have a more powerful computer um, just to give them feedback on um, how it runs. Okay. So now I'll go and talk about the two extensions that I'm going to install uh, for my work are going to be prettier for JavaScript formatting and, you know, see, um, CSS this format CSS, HTML, JavaScript. So I'll do that one. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to also do uh, PHP IntelliFence. Okay. And I don't have a, a install of PHP right now. So it's going to say, oh, it doesn't detect your PHP path. So, um, but yeah, that might be another video, how to install PHP on a Chromebook. All right, so uh, we've got P PHP and Telefence going. So those are the two, uh, you know, actually functional plugins. Um, one thing we can also do is we can install some cool themes. Halloween is coming up. Let's do Dracula, of course. So we'll do Dracula, uh, install. Okay, um, and I also might want to do Darkula. Let's see if they have a Darkula, like IntelliJ. Uh, they have a Darkula theme. Let's install that one as well. 
let's let's go with Darkula right now because we don't want to go full Dracula just yet. Okay. Um, all right. So I think I ha- I think I said Darkula. If you you want to change your theme, you can do Control K, Control T, and yeah, I got Darkula. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, one more thing you can do, uh, I think, in the new VS Code is you can do matching brackets. Uh, so or color bra- brackets. So let's do uh, just do a search color brackets uh, VS Code. Okay, bracket pair colorizer. Um, yeah, that's an extension, but you don't need it anymore. So I think um, let's check the updates. It was in here somewhere. Oh yeah, um, built-in fast bracket colorization. Um, so you can turn it on by setting this to true uh, in your settings. So let's try and do that and see if I remember how to do that. Uh, so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go here and go control comma to get to my settings. And then uh, let's open the JSON file and let's put a comma here after Darkula and then we'll paste this in. And I don't think I need a comma at the end. I think you can put a comma. Um, but anyways, so so we got that settings.json. So I've got my bracket pair colorizer. So it looks all cool. All right. Um, and let's uh, create a new folder and test this, this out. So uh, I'm just going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it test. And then let's open the folder. Uh, yes, I trust the authors. Uh, I going to ask you that. Say so yes. Um, uh, it's your choice if you trust the authors. It depends on your site. Uh, let's make some script.js file. OK, so we've got some JavaScript file. Uh, I'm going to write a function, call it uh, Timmy. And uh, let's see. So we I can always see the, the matching brackets. Uh, let's say if uh, apple triple equals orange, I haven't defined these, so it's going to give me some errors you see there. But you see it's colorizing my brackets, which is pretty cool, and it's doing it in the Darkula formula. So now I can write my code in, in VS Code, and it installed, and it's running well. I'm recording stuff in the background. Um, you can give your Chromebook a little bit more power by swap enabling an extra two gigabytes of RAM, but this is only running on four gigabytes of RAM, and it's running just fine, um, even with the stuff recording in the background. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you enable like a million extensions, it's going to slow it down, but it does run pretty fast by modern computing standards, and it's a pretty cool text editor. Uh, so check it out. All right. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Oh, also like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Of course, the channel will be really happy. Anyways, now I'm going to stop the video. Have a great day.